Greetings, galactic co-creators of the new Earth, the 144, awakening, activating, rising into the light. We have another 24 hours of powerful energies flowing in, activating our DNA, lighting us up, lighting up the grid. We are putting our awareness and attention, our team of 144, calling on the 144,000, to bring the rains, to calm the fires in the west of the U.S. of the North America. And yes, I know, beloved beings of light, fire can be purifying. I come from the water lineages and the fire lineages. In the Taoist arts, we bring both into balance. Too much water, we call on the fire. Too much fire, we call on the water. Divine feminine, divine masculine come together in balance at the end of today's transmission. I will explain and try to clarify for the last time why we are doing this and a couple reasons why these fires are so extreme. Obviously, the world is on fire and we are the world. We are being lit up, Gaia is being lit up, but it is calling us to rise up through the flames, through our activations, to call on the rains, to tap into our co-creative powers, to calm the fires down. When too much fire, we bring in the water to come to balance, to come into harmony. And that is the middle path. And it's kind of like when we say extreme left, extreme right, people are coming to the middle, living from the heart. We balance the water and the fire, divine feminine, divine masculine. So we rise up and we see these fires being healed. This is like inflammation of the earth. We can pull out the fire with the sacred mist, with the sacred water, divine feminine, the tears of heaven, weeping for all beings suffering. That is the passion of the Christos, our love for all life. And many of our bro stars and sisters are sacrificing their lives for these fires. They're losing their homes and millions of our animal kingdoms. So we rise up and we are activated. And this is a calling. This is an activation to say, Beloved consciousness of light, we can do this with enough faith, you can move mountains. So with the faith within knowing, our oneness with source, that we can manifest anything that is in our heart uh, through our compassion, our kindness, and our love to assist all life and assist humanity. And this is just the beginning. And we can do this, beloved beings of light. We are sorcerers, sorceress, priests, priestess, king, queen, sovereign, crowned. We have infinite light and infinite life within us, within our still center. And we, we tap into that cosmic consciousness, the God consciousness. We realize that together we can manifest anything. And as we activate the faith, the courage, the tenacity, and the strength of our love, of our minds, of our awareness, and we tap into our pure awareness and we see the rains calming the fires, bringing down the heat, coming into balance. We are in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold. It's what science calls where the earth, the distance from the sun. There would be no complex life on this planet if we were too far from the sun or too close. So there's this zone where life, complex life, can manifest. Now yesterday, the last couple of days, I've been activated with the sacred 77 and the lineage of the eagle and the condor. For those on Patreon, I put up a video today at one of the sacred portals with the living Ankh, the eternal Ankh meditation from our angels down in Ecuador, Sri Ankara, with an eagle and condor refinement. And after the transmissions, I'll explain a little more on the sacred 77. It's been about a year almost exactly a year since I was activated with the Divine 44, and this is the next phase or stage of our team, our lineages coming together through the Rainbow Tribe and being activated with the Divine Union codes, with the Eagle and the Condor codes, and many other things. So stick around till the end. Today, what manifests on the Schumann Resonance, just to play with us a little, 11 Hertz manifestation on the 11th, and there were 111 earthquakes in the past 24 hours. The most powerful 
in our sacred portal, our bro stars and sis stars down in the sacred Andes mountains of Chile 6.3, and that was at 735 UTC, 51 kilometers depth, 51.2 miles from Tocopila. So we have the 66 code and the 73. Yesterday, as I was driving to a portal, my speedometer read 1717 and it was 71 degrees out. Today, it was 1733 miles at 317. So we're seeing the 37 into the 73 consistently, which is symbolic of heaven on earth, also a 1010 portal. We had activations today in the crown of Lemuria, multiple, right in the center in the Aleutian Islands, 17 kilometers depth, 178.145 longitude. We had the 1717, 88, at 1858 UTC, and a 3.5. So we have the 888, the triple helix of the 12 strand DNA. We have the 1212 portal also coming in, and the 1111. We had multiple 44. We had a 44 activation, Lemurian energy in Japan, and then in Indonesia, also on the ring of fire with the Lemurian energy, with the Atlantean energy, Puerto Rico 3.0, and another 3.0, and a 3.3 in the Alaska Peninsula, also another 4.5 in Chile. And then Papua New Guinea, 4.8. And then a 6.1 three hours ago in Japan. Iwate in a 4.9 and then a 4.5. So we had the Trinity in the sacred portal. That was in Ofunatu, Japan. So another day of powerful divine feminine energies flowing in, activating our heart centers. Our hearts are fully open now. And we're feeling on the deepest levels. So tap in to these feelings, to these emotions of our love for Pachamama, for Gaia, for Source Creator, for ourselves, for each other, for the children, our elders, and all beings of pure consciousness here now. We'll start today's first transmission from Divine Sister of the Light, Sandra Walter. Divine DNA Decree. I am the resurrection, and the life of the rejuvenation of my physical body, releasing all the hormones, chemicals, and codes needed to express immortal radiance, beauty, health, and vitality in this now from the ascensionpath.com. Today, from Divine Sister of the Light, Isabella Rose, we are meant to make love so deeply that our physical bodies disappear Love so unconditionally that we merge, we melt into one. Love with such devotion that our consciousness expands, taking us into a state of pure cosmic bliss and divine ecstasy, so deeply that we become nothing and everything, all that is, in sacred union of our feminine and masculine energies and inner child, in holy trinity, in sacred union of the lover and the beloved, becoming the third energy, God, source of all creation. This is the power of love. This is Tantra. This is yoga, union. This is Heros Gamos. This is sacred marriage. This is the Christ within, Christ consciousness. This is God. God is love. All it wants is purity, devotion, and harmony. This is also what Jesus and Mary Magdalene tried to tell us. And this is why... Jesus was crucified and Mary rejected, discredited, and banned. Please throw away your crosses. Humanity was not yet ready for the highest truth. The time is now. We are living love. We are divine. We are sacred creators. This is the golden age. And from Divine Sister of the Light, Grace Solaris, Arcturian High Council, calling the Beloveds, the divine consorts to step forward and into service. This is your clarion call to get together, find each other, and unite. This is for those pioneers of light that will not go for less than experiencing and embodying the highest quintessence of universal love and human embodiment and have contracted to serve as anchors for the twin flame essence to actualize ascension and bringing in the Christ keys and codes, Eden template of divine union, 
for the implementation and seeding of the new heaven on earth, fifth dimensional earth, many souls are now at cross point where they can no longer stay in the 3D hologram of their incarnational story and are ready to move on to the 5D new earth timeline to unite with their divine consort and fulfill their divine plan and service to all that is in accordance with their soul plan and purpose. It is a deep calling and longing that cannot be ignored as the time is ripe to step forward and free yourself of all polarity-based programming and step into divine sovereignty and your highest soul expression and divine potential, a rebirthing and return to oneness and embodiment of pure God omnipresence. You are invited to this unprecedented dispensation of light in the triple trinity triad portal for the birthing of the beloved within and the clearing and activation of your sacred heart space. This activation is overlighted by beloved Mary Magdalene and Yeshua and facilitated by our beloved Arcturian family of light, which will conduct a download and upgrade of our DNA and a rewiring of our heart and high heart. It will dissolve the membranes between the left and right upper and lower heart chambers to open the bridal chamber within our diamond heart, a sacred initiation space, an alchemical cauldron for the alchemical marriage the Heros Gamos, between our divine feminine and masculine aspects and the birthing of the inner beloved twin essence within our heart, it will indeed prepare us for the reunion with our divine consort, sacred tantric partner, and divine timing, which might or might not be our original twin flame, but our monadic oversoul group avatar. Now is the time when many beloveds will come together on the external as we are ready to or already have completed the inner alchemical marriage for the anchoring of the twin essence divine union blueprint to actualize and anchor in the 5D heaven on earth star Tara, the higher aspect of Gaia, into the grid and assist her in repositioning herself on her new orbital trajectory in the galaxy in the 5D parallel universe of the golden age. Needless to say, this ancient call is specifically to all those that are ready to embark on the next leg of their soul plan and stepping into divine service as instruments of love, guided meditation for the transmission will be posted to the event wall later today where Mary Magdalene and Yeshua will lead us into the bridal chamber and facilitate healing together with the Arcturians. You can look this up on Facebook. Look up Grace Solaris and the Diamond Heart Bridal Chamber activation. We have the link in the transmissions and the description below from Grace Solaris with Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, and the Arcturians. Today from Divine Bro Star of the Light, Ross Shugar. Today, the start of Nova Gaia going into galactic timelines. It's a new dawn and a new day for humanity. Accelerated ascension and energies coming in. Heaven on earth is here and the heavenly realms are celebrating. Tune in, go to God, and see the celebrations for yourself. Love, light, and blessings to you all. Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Celia Fenn. Mars is in retrograde and Aries. Ascension symptoms are intense, including weird dreams and inability to sleep. Mars is in Aries for six months, long enough to reveal its past. Mars is whispering its story to those who are open to their galactic heritage. It is a story about the first time when the Elohim created the twin planets of Terra. Let us call them Terra 1 and Terra 2. Both were designed and created to be lush garden homes for sentient life. We call these planets Earth and Mars today. Then about 20,000 years ago, there was a great cosmic explosion as a far distant star exploded and the shock was spread out across the galaxy. Mars lost its atmosphere and the garden was destroyed. Earth trembled and faltered but then recovered slowly. All souls from Mars were transferred to Earth, Terra 1, but they carried with them the trauma of losing home. And as with most unexplored trauma, they began to play it out, destroying their new home and threatening its viability. Archangel Michael says to us that it is now time to heal this deep wound and reclaim our home on Earth. One day we will go back to bring the garden back to Mars, but for now we must heal our deep trauma and reclaim the garden on our own Earth. This is a cosmic news story for those who are on the path of star wisdom. If it does not resonate with you, just let it go.
Celia Fenn from StarChildGlobal.com. Today from Sparks of Divine Light Healing. Mars has shifted retrograde in Aries. We should probably pay attention to this shift as it's been direct for more than two and a half years. Mars will remain retrograde until November 13th. This could shake things up for the next two months. We can expect some drama. We are also seeing a lot of fires. We are feeling this energy a little extra as Mars is also very close to the Earth. In astrology, Mars rules the root chakra. We are seeing a lot of changes happen fast within the old energetic grids of the Earth as well as the new. We all have a chakra system within the body. These are energy centers that run from the base of our spine to the top of our heads. Gaia, our planet, the Earth, also has a chakra system. The Earth's chakras are major power points on the planet. The Earth's chakras are connected through the ley lines. These ley lines form a grid of energy that circles the planet. We are all connected through this grid of energy. Many of you are energy workers. Some of you have been guided to or even placed on the ley lines at different times. We can see a lot of fires happening near that base chakra area. The root chakra of the earth is Mount Shasta, California. This chakra is Ra. It is the tail of the dragon. It is the source of all life force energy. It is the root of this planet's entire energy system. The chakra actually regulates all of the life force energy of the planet. Mars has shifted retrograde and is very much affecting not just our root chakras but Gaia's. There is a purge occurring in this area. This may be temporarily throwing things out of balance. When our root is unbalanced, we may feel uncertain or even out of balance. It's important that we are all working on coming back into balance energetically during this time. It's important that we are connecting with Gaia during this time. We are continuing to release a lot as we make way for this week's 9-9 and 9-11 portals. We can expect lots of twists and turns this week energetically. We have had a lot of very positive astrological alignments this year, and we are stepping into some fresh energies. The next several weeks will take us so much higher within these energies. We are preparing for the autumn equinox. Mercury has entered Libra. This is going to bring the planet some much-needed balance. And Venus has entered Leo. This will bring some very positive energy into our relationships. This should be making you feel extra in love. If you're not, you should be working on healing any blockages you have coming up. This entire journey is meant to take us deeper into alignment. Once we have mastered that within ourselves, we are meant to come together with another. We are seeing a new paradigm of love emerge. We are going to see so many spiritual unions at this time. As we have such a focus on healing the heart chakra, many are looking within and manifesting their twin flame. It's the perfect time to be working on bringing more love into your life. This week's energy is reminding us that change is coming. 2020 really is showing us the effects of all these cosmic energies. During the next year, many will continue to leave rather than integrate into the new experience. This is why we are being reminded that ascension is a big deal and not something you do in every car incarnation. It's never been more important for us to be putting in the work. We now must release the old. We have a lot of karmic energies continuing to clear during this week. We are also back in retrograde portal. Mars has shifted into retrograde in Aries, and it's the first time we have had this placement in 30 years. This may be igniting your inner warrior. Jupiter and Saturn are both about to end their retrograde cycles. However, both have played a huge role in bringing about the events of 2020. We can expect some of the same dramas to continue as they shift direct. 9-11 will be huge. The sun will be opposite Neptune. Neptune is associated with all things unseen, even viruses. You may be receiving conflicting information about this pandemic at this time. While many see this as a virus, there are others that see what is happening as the effects from the changing of the energies. That's why it's very important that you're using your intuition during this time. Pay attention to your inner voice and the messages you receive during this time. We are going to see a massive surge of energy with this year's autumn equinox. It will bring a massive blast of healing energy with it. This is a powerful time as the veil is really thin right now. We are accessing other dimensions and can easily connect with the other side. This is a powerful time to be sending love to any loved ones in the other realm. 
It's also a powerful time to be bringing any messages back and forth from Sparks of Divine Light Healing dot com, and today from Divine Sister of the Light Carolyn, servant of Yahweh, nine eleven. There was a final ending to the wounded masculine. Karmic balances here and neutralizing the equation. This has birthed the divine masculine Christ, free of ego. We are receiving a deeper level of immortal flesh as part of our freedom from reptilian DNA and bloodline, Anunnaki no more. This is more completion of freeing the original human race, God's chosen covenant, family, and people. Purification and activation of your feminine aspects are happening in both of you now. This is releasing resentments from the past for reunion. The Holy Spirit has accessed your mind. She is freeing you from whatever childhood trauma stole your power and blocked you from liberation, joy, and wish fulfillment. This is divine intervention, freeing you today to ascend you into your 369 birthright alchemical template and a master creator. Solar plexus purging can occur as this spell work is removed from your bile, blood, system, and DNA. You have been isolated for your safety. You have attained so much wisdom and maturity from the initiations you've endured. Victory is here for completing the mission of co-creating the new timelines of Christ and your covenant with Creator. We are at the final stages, degrees, and access point of clearing the old embodiment crystal clear. The final lendings of the Cabal and Jezebel worship has happened. God has served judgments from the Book of Life. All Cabal slavery and Cabal worship are no more. You are walking forward as the bride, bridegroom of Christ, free from misery. The path is wide open. New beginnings are here. From Kundalini Twin Flames dot com, from Divine Sister of the Light, Meg Benedict, Mars turned retrograde on Wednesday, September 9th at 28 degrees Aries and ends on November 13th at 15 degrees Aries. This two-month period may feel frustrating as Mars squares Saturn, bringing delays, restrictions, and interruptions. You may encounter authoritarian resistance to your projects and desires. Patience is key during this transit. Mars signifies our ability to take action establish healthy boundaries to speak our truth and fight for justice. While retrograde, Mars highlights deeper hidden destructive tendencies toward victim mentality or predator behavior. Now is an opportune time to do shadow work and flush out unconscious patterns and programming that harm ourselves and others. As we break free from the amnesia of the 3D simulation, we begin to gain a sense of self, some independent thinking, and some intuition. We organically open our holographic mind to the 4D astral plane. We start to read more, learn more, absorb more new ideas, theories, and perspectives. But if we haven't started doing any shadow work, then this newfound freedom is still ego-driven, Mars and Aries. The newly awakened mind begins to feel spiritually superior to others, operating from lack of compassion or discernment. When we work on healing core wounds, clearing discordant programming and unconscious ego patterns, we can access more 5D unity consciousness in our lives. We graduate beyond ego-driven demands and recognize our responsibility to use our power consciously in regards to how our words and actions affect the greater good. We continue to ascend into higher awareness and empathy for all life on the planet. As the heart heals, the mind expands. We learn how to master more balance in our daily lives. While Mars retro squares Saturn during September, we are blessed by the Cosmic Balancer. On September 22nd, the equinox arrives at zero degree Libra, opening a stargate portal and zero point energy, while day and night are equal length. It is the balance point between opposing forces and a rare moment of galactic equilibrium. The gateway is opening to infinite potential. Take advantage of this opportune time to seed your higher visions and intentions. The incoming solar waves of plasma energy streams from the galactic center into Earth's magnetic field, moving the poles and altering the climate. We can expect unusually powerful solar waves while the equinox gateway is open. Plasma is a cloud of protons and electrons transferred by the solar wind. 
Some warn of equinox cracks that form an Earth's magnetic field during the equinox. We call these openings portals or stargates. While the gates are open, the cosmic light infusion affects global consciousness and cellular formation. From NewEarthCentral.com, today from Divine Sister of the Light, Abigail Wainwright. There is a divinely orchestrated higher purpose to your life. You feel it. You are here at this pivotal point to make a special contribution. A part of coming to Earth is to evolve yourself as well as to serve humanity in some way. Your evolution is your life purpose and your service to humanity is your life work or mission. Both of these things are intertwined because you serve others through your own evolution. As you evolve, you naturally hold more light code frequency and are able to be that pillar on Earth to anchor the higher dimensions. Each moment you evolve yourself, you automatically are serving the collective as well. In order to do your soul mission, you align with both the higher will and your higher self. Many advanced souls are here as twin flames, so they fully activate themselves back into alignment of who they are and why they are here on earth. Your highest vision about your ideal life on earth is showing you the potential of your higher path. Do not discourage your dreams and visions because they are messages that hold the key to manifestation. Honor yourself in these visions from the deepest part of your being about why you came here now. You are here to transform your world. Your soul knew that this lifetime would be new frequencies and energies coming through that were designed to anchor a greater capacity to love and be in harmony than in our past. You knew this wave of light frequency would come through and you would meet yourself in another form to assist aiding this world to expand beyond all into the infinite divine potential of higher consciousness. The higher vibrations that have been coming to earth are shifting and allowing you to become even more compatible with your soul and on your path of spiritual growth. The inner shifting you experience will create massive changes in your outer reality. It is no longer a question of having what you want, but making sure you have asked for what you want so you may receive it. As the vibration increases, things will manifest much more rapidly because the aspect of the higher plane is taken on. When connected to the higher dimensions, you experience anything you think about immediately. Right now on earth, there is an even greater opportunity to open to joy, growth, love, and aliveness. You are a multidimensional being that is tapping into the higher plan of humanity and the evolution of this planet. It is an exciting moment of profound transformation. You can find Abigail on YouTube at Abigail Love Light 11. Today from the Archangelic Calendar, Gaia is in the element of air and keeps repeating the notion of assembly. She is indicating that we are moving into a new phase of physical bonding and heartfelt gatherings. We have learned that humanity's current median climate always has an element of Gaia's will in it. In the words of the wise Coco the Gorilla, we are nature. What needs to be said is that this report is not full of prognostications. It's full of disclosure regarding the moves we make. When we see the Schumann jump at precisely the times of our motions, it is no coincidence. To also be noted is that we mentioned this exact issue many seasons ago, that the Schumann is not capable of measuring these energies to avoid any confusion about the matter. All people who put themselves in a leadership role need to keep their egos out of their message, as there are too many spiritual leaders communicating with their ego leading the way. Also a word to the wise, physical science and astrophysics has an omnipotent boss, and its name is quantum mechanics. We assure you that we, you and our legions, are implementing these timeline shifts, but we are awful humble about our efforts. We have fulfilled the prophecy and then some. Fear nothing as you return from battle. The result has not caught up with this reality. Have confidence in what you see and feel from your first-hand perspective. And do not allow fear-based persuasion to tell you otherwise. Many ask why we did not participate in the Lion's Gate and are not jumping for joy about the Nine-Nine Gate. The reason is simple. Portals and gates that open up because of a specific date appearing in the 3D calendar is a step in the wrong direction. We only take gates that we know exactly where they go to and we do not wait around for the sun, moon, and stars to make it so. Besides the point that the linear calendar is a product of organized darkness, going with the ebb and flow of the chains that bind humanity is futile. 
This attitude is another example of giving your power away. Our legions do not take chances. We make decisive metaphysical moves. If you wish to use this as a reminder to set positive intentions, go for it, but it is always advised to command your path in full control. We know that this is not a popular opinion, but honesty and effectiveness in our legions are more critical than coddling one's notions. Everyone is free to do as they wish, but something is missing when the legions are absent. Archangel Jophiel likes to describe this exact situation as making soup without water. Engineering, floating lakes, not random asteroids with water present, cause once barren planets to have abundant water. It's not a complete mystery that cosmic vapor condensed in massive explosive events create lakes larger than most galaxies. When these giant floating lakes hit a landmass, it looks an awful lot what it sounds like, a tremendous splash. Water evolves, has memory and consciousness, and just like all of the elements, its origins are otherworldly and are truly magical. You have to touch the dream realm for the sake of your health, to reset your cellular memory, and is why sleep is so vital for your healing. Your consciousness reaches a cellular reset point that can immediately bring the body more comfort. When you fail to hit REM sleep, your body does not have this opportunity. This modality is a quantum mechanism and needs the benefit of unconscious observation to implement. Anubis is going to be busy helping souls find the other side. For those who do not know this fantastic canine, he is not f from these parts and is the voluntary principal engineer in the reincarnation process. He is a very hands-on manager and is extremely good at his job. There was a mass deception in the reincarnation process and he needs to implement a direct intervention. Anomalies in Georgia and the Carolinas will increase as Atlantis becomes more physically aware. Thanks to our efforts yesterday, the manifestation of our living continent has reached a fevered pitch. 5D News The rumors of the malevolent greys leaving Earth are very accurate, and the word of a strong benevolent grey presence is also correct. As far as the greys are concerned, the good guys most certainly won. Rough ascension symptoms are just beginning, and there isn't much we can do to change that. It's par for the course, as our conscious mind must digest our physical changes. Fevers do something similar to our bodies, but in a much more subtle way. The Atlanteans have had an age-long battle with a group of reptilian hybrids from Orion. This conflict is utterly asinine, but it was a major issue back in the days. It was started with a marriage grown apart that was taken way too seriously by both sides. It was one of the first intergalactic relationships that failed because they grew apart, but both sides did not take it that way. It is now universal law that everyone will have an opportunity to adopt the Archangelic Calendar as their central observance of time. It will be up to them to make the ultimate decision to adopt it or not. Legion News, for the record, no being likes disrespect, and this is especially the case for non-physical beings. Again, this falls under the category of do not poke at supernatural forces. Still, destroying the graves of the innocent sleeping beings will summon a particular unit of the army of the dead against these efforts. This backlash is very similar to what happened when the adventures raided the tombs of the pharaohs. They all died in bizarre and mysterious ways. This atrocity is timely news for our legions, as it saves us a good deal of time and effort by bringing this army of the dead to life. The situation also motivates the army to join our legions with great enthusiasm. No one on any side of the fence cannot say that we did not give them an advanced enough warning. Philosophical Nourishment Philosophically speaking, the Vedic texts describe our ability and powers in great detail. These excellent books can be a bit of a how-to guide if you put yourself in the deity's mindset. Like every other spiritual text, the Vedic text is only evident when certain consciousness levels are present. You can say the same about the Bible when the codex is adequately understood. For example, the word Lord means higher consciousness. But you have to read above, behind, and around this term because of massive manipulation. Segregation can start in many different ways. Today's terminology is the most effective tool to do so, causing separation in the masses' minds. This tactic causes 
an imbalance in both sides of the brain and causes each side to regulate its notions toward the subject until cognition can find itself out of this labyrinth. 3D news? It has to hurt if it is to heal is the best way to describe the 3D current earth events. We have to let something play out and again I state that this is the best case scenario that we can find. We hopped timeline to timeline and this is a livable ending to the dark ages of humanity saga. England is next up for a significant transmutation event. Many failed attempts to transmute a cluster of darkness in the area have forced macro density to step in which is never an understated event. In all fairness, the United Kingdom's residents have much more density to contend with than other places in the world, and this is because of the very dense history of the nations. We will continue to see a strong starship presence in our skies, but more specifically in the cities where there is civil unrest. The galactics are eating up any extracurricular energy that affects the people below, and it is about all they can do without infringing upon free will. The contamination of the world's food supply has reached ridiculous heights. This issue is a battle that should be on the forefront, but it seems to fall on a deaf ear to modern society. The lack of outrage is because this poison does not work as acutely as other threats facing humanity. The further away from our natural energy signature of food is, the more it will throw off our rhythms and cause illness in the body. We will help this issue in today's assignments, but this is a matter of personal choice. Small misplaced earthquakes are not earthquakes. The tools for today's assignments are in the link in the description below. The assignments for today. Please note, it is always advised to hold metaphysical modalities for at least a 72 count. We have found many dense areas in need for metaphysical cleansing. Once you remotely enter the set areas, engulf it with violet flame, and then bring forth an exit portal to infinitely expanding creator source. Saqqara, Calcutta, Denver, Melbourne, Hong Kong, and New York. We can shut down all evil clones by sending Beijing lightning. Send lightning in the following color codes. White, pink, light blue, gold, yellow, green, red, black, copper, bronze, brown, teal, rose gold, silver, orange, indigo, violet, platinum, diamond, rainbow. Clearly we need to micromanage Australia. They are dealing with suppression technology and many years of corruption and atrocities. Send the flowing color flames to the continent. White, pink, light blue, gold, yellow, green, red, black, Copper, bronze, brown, teal, rose gold, silver, orange, indigo, violet, platinum, diamond, and rainbow. There is a stargate that has presented itself directly on the circle of the four corner U.S. states. This gate needs a calibration and we have nicknamed this the Prophecy Gate as this will speed our efforts along significantly. It's very similar to the portals we placed elsewhere except we will be putting them all in the same place and layering them one on top of the other. Gate codes 0011001, We are all aware of the power of the original crystal skulls, but most are not aware that they do not need to be physically in each other's presence to be linked. If you have ever made a crystal grid, you know you need a pointer or wand to connect the crystals. You can do the same thing with a glowing metaphysical sword of your choice. Touch the crystal skulls and connect them to a center point, which in this case will be the Atlantean continent we reimagined in yesterday's assignments. The element of water is needed on the west side of the U.S. We are still waiting for the local lightworkers to take the lead on this issue. We now send water on behalf of the animals and plants of the region. One cannot help but bring to mind the story of the bee from yesterday. It is a good idea to send rainbow light and plasma to all the water and land masses. It will speed the healing along very rapidly and allow for divine will to infect the elements. Another great way to encourage healing is to erect plasma towers in the earth's waters and skies. 
These towers look a lot like a holographic version of a space needle and can be any color. In this case, rainbow will cover all the bases, but you are welcome to use any color that inspires you. There are many incoming starships that need diplomatic contact. It is up to our legions to make telepathic contact with as many of these ships as possible and welcome them with open arms. Do not worry about making contact with evil ships. They are not in our skies any longer. Bless all that we intake, air, food, water, etc. with the following lights. White, pink, light blue, gold, yellow, green, red, black, copper, bronze, brown, teal, rose gold, silver, orange, indigo, violet, platinum, diamond, and rainbow. From the archangelicalendar.com Today from Gaia Portal Healings of all hue beings begins in earnest. Release from the constrictions of 3D bodies begins. Planetary freedom is sensed by all. The light is at home. From GaiaPortal.wordpress.com And today from Nyingma Master, Tibetan Buddhism, Guru Rinpoche. You never receive blessings just from asking. Blessings come when you have got devotion. Today from the Zolkin Times, Kin 166, White Planetary, World Bridger. Planetary is a name for the number 10, and its keywords are perfect, manifest, and produce. We are on the 10th day of the Red Earth Wave Spell with its agenda of evolution. The 10th day is the most perfect day of a wave spell, neither challenging, enduring, or intense. Whatever day it's combined with, it enhances the energy in a pleasant way. Today is White World Bridger, which represents death, equality, and opportunity. The World Bridger provides opportunity to cross the threshold, journey to another realm, or to another phase of your journey and evolution. As it is a planetary day, this suggests it is the perfect day to cross a bridge. Some people fear the World Bridger because of the word death associated with it. This is symbolic, however, the shaman's death, which entails letting go of ego, or anything else weighing you down. Naturally, this process elevates one to a higher vibration, a worthy threshold to cross. Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Christina Papa Giorgio, White Planetary World Bridger, Kin 166, 11 September 2020, Manifesting Equality. 11 9 2020 equal 11 9 22 equal 2 9 4 equal 15 equal 6 11 portal gate duality 2 twins partner cooperation 9 destiny endings humanity service 4 form structure foundation earth 6 heaven christ family harmony kin 166 equal 13 equal 4 9 11 a powerful portal day for building bridges and connections to our new world. Day 10 in the Red Earth Wave Spell of Evolution. Through navigating our way through the signs, synchronicity, and earth magic, flowing and aligning with the rhythms and cycles of Nova Gaia. Today we manifest through the art of surrendering, all attachment to the physical plane, becoming wholly present and receptive to the fantastic opportunities flowing our way. Powerful manifestation potentials arise today. Tone of creation, planetary tone 10 in the physical realm, action produces, power perfects, essence manifestation. The tenth stage of the wave spell is the perfection of all we imagine as possible and more. It is the harvest stage where we happily reap our manifest splendor. The forms we have been imagining begin to manifest into our reality and our lives begin to reflect the deep soul longings that we desire. Planetary energies enable us to build and manifest strong connections with spirit today. We have the power to manifest and produce incredible prosperity, happiness, and joy, both in our hearts and the planetary heart of Nova Gaia. A powerful day to get physical, using divine alchemy to manifest from the ethers into matter, it is a great day to use our unified hearts to manifest on a planetary level for a better world. So planetary creators, today we let go and let God surrender to the synchronicities and allow our brand new lives and new paths to be revealed. How exciting. A great day for connecting with planetary kin 
and communicating your grander visions. Today's question is how can I totally surrender and let go of the old world and old battles to bridge new worlds and manifest our greatest planetary destiny? Divine blessings for building the foundation of your new rainbow bridge to bliss. In La Kek Alakin, Christina White Magnetic World Bridger, Kin 66. Kin 166, White Planetary World Bridger. The mantra, the code for today is, I perfect in order to equalize. Producing opportunity, I seal the store of death with the planetary tone of manifestation. I am guided by the power of timelessness. So on this powerful day of activations and awakenings, let us know, beloved beings of light, in the comments below, what you're experiencing, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, your visions, your dreams, and synchronicities. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click the subscribe button below, and the little bell next to subscribe to get notifications on future uploads. I do my best to upload a new recording every day. And as always, we have a link in the description below to the transcriptions of today's transmission. And we archive these on our website, primedisclosure.com. I'd also like to thank everyone for their pledges and support on Patreon. I'd like to welcome and thank Divine Bro Star of the Light, Kirby, for your pledge today. Thank you, brother. And Divine Angel of the Light, Crete, for your pledge today. Much appreciated, Angels of the Light. And I appreciate you all for your continued support. If you'd like to support my mission and work on here with Prime Disclosure, my mission with the Eagle Fly with the Condor and manifesting sanctuaries and healing retreats over this realm, you could do so at patreon.com forward slash Prime Disclosure. I'd like to also thank Divine Sister of the Light, Paulina, for your donation today. Much appreciated. So we'll start off here, finish up these transmissions with the Sacred 77. About a year ago, during the harmonic conversion ceremony I did, I was receiving downloads and activations for the Divine 44, our team of Earth Angelics that I worked with one-on-one -on -one over the last year, and also the code of the Sacred 77, which over the last few months got put on hold, and now it was activated in the last couple of days, and then today as I was in a sacred portal, I was getting visions and downloads for the Sacred 77, and that is code, which many of you will feel the activation of that code, and it is part of the lineage of the eagle and the condor, which will be part of what I'll be working with, with my soul star family, and my visions are showing me with my Venusian queen, the condor, Shakti, Shakti, as I'm receiving deep activations from her, deep within the heart center, opening my vision and sight in ways that I never could have imagined. So today at the sacred portal at the lake, where the wind was kicking in and the waves were crashing and light codes were coming from the sun, I activated part of the sacred 77 so those on Patreon can view that today. I have that uploaded and posted, just to Patreon. And part of the vision I'm seeing, although the number is unlimited, that there is a key 144, light workers, star blossoms, love workers, way showers that will be part of the Sacred 77, and then this will expand out to 144,000. So this probably will not come fully into effect until after I connect reunite with Shakti, the divine feminine condor that is in the West, which I plan on starting my journey through five portals to get to the condor's nest, the sacred condor portal. And we're seeing the sanctuary and healing retreat somewhere in Washington State by Mount Adams or Hood River. That'll come in time. My main focus and goal is ceremony and activating and transforming, transmuting through these portals until I touch wings with the condor, and then we'll be able to manifest the Sacred 77 code together. And as always, I come from non-judgment and free will, 
So this is just for people that feel the resonance that are activated by the codes that'll be coming through. And I'll put these through the transmissions and then the teachings and trainings through Patreon and directly to our team of anyone that feels the calling for manifesting the codes of divine love, divine union, and divine connection, which is coming through the Sacred 77. And of course, the Divine 44, which was the original team, which many of them are part of the Sacred 77, and all are welcome. This is for all of humanity. This is for all sentient beings that we are all a part of, especially those that listen to this channel that resonate with the daily transmissions and that are leaving comments. And our higher dimensional friends are witnessing all this. We are witnesses to our higher dimensional selves and to infinitely expanding creator source and our star families, our galactic families. So these all work together. And that's why I try to inspire and uplift and do my best to activate these codes and everyone that comes to this channel and to these transmissions. And now to this manifestation of calming the fires, putting the fires out. And this is the last time I'll probably explain or bring to clarity why this is important. Obviously, everything is important when it comes to protecting our people and our nations. But this one in particular, because we see through our lineage, now I mostly teach water path, but in the past I've trained and taught fire paths, such as tumo breathing, fire breathing. I've trained in the desert, in extreme heat, extreme cold, for many years. And when Sifu attained rainbow body and went to the higher realms of light and came back reformed to physical matter we call gold dragon, he saw too much fire in the world, so he started his own lineage called Kunlun from Kunlun Mountain, sacred mountain of the immortals in China. And it is a divine feminine, a water path. So we see these extreme fires all over the world, but specifically now anchored into the west coast of the United States. And part of this is nefarious. It's trying to suppress the divine masculine and block the, the holy fires of the divine feminine. And this is on a deep way. Go into meditation, into the stillness, and you'll get clarity on that. So I kind of explain this. We balance the fires and the waters in Taoism. Too much water, we bring, in the, bring up the fire. Too much fire, bring up the water. For instance, you go into a sauna to do a purge, a cleanse, a purification. You stay in there maybe half hour to an hour. Ten hours could kill you. Just like I've done sweat lodge with the Ojibwe. This three, four hour. But people that were not trained, such as this person that was in the secret, that did this ceremony where he wouldn't let people out of the chamber, out of the, the lodge, and he covered it with plastic or something. Several people lost their lives that day because of his arrogance and not, no knowledge. He did not train, I'm sure, with our native brothers and sisters. And this is a sacred ceremony. And due to arrogance and ignorance, he was forcing them to stay in longer than their bodies could handle. And there were com people in there who said they were complaining. And he told them just to toughen up and stick it out. It's like, where's your compassion? You know, that is what we're activating, the compassion codes. And we're working with the elements. We work with the five elements in the Taoist and Buddhist practices. The wood, the fire, the earth, the metal, and the water. And the metal connected with the lungs is oxygen. So we can, when we connect directly with Source and Gaia, hold the breath. There's techniques activating certain elements, and oxygen is an element, and fire needs oxygen to flourish. Without oxygen, no fire, just like in deep space, nothing can catch on fire with, with zero oxygen. So Gaia, with our help, we can calm down, we can... Hold the breath. All it would take is several seconds. Now I know that fires would restart. The fire would go out. If all oxygen was out of the air, Gaia can hold her breath. We can hold our breaths. We take a deep breath in and hold it while we say, no oxygen. Take it out. We can live several minutes without oxygen. Fire, only second. 
So we breathe it in, hold it. And why we connect with the element of oxygen through the lungs, through the metal, we can see silver, see the color silver. And with the oxygen, we call on the water element, the kidneys, the bladder. We feel that like water running down a window pane. We feel the drops of water on our flesh. We feel them on Pachamama. We feel them calming the flames. And we know that these fires out west in the west, many of them are caused directly from humans. Some of those intentionally, some of these go uncontrollably in a non-natural way due to the spraying of certain chemicals in the atmosphere and there's evidence of energy type weapons. So that this is many levels and part of it too is the manipulation of man's hand. Just like we believe at one time, it is believed the Sahara Desert in Africa was once a lush rainforest. And many biologists believe that, and there's much evidence about this, and I saw it in a vision the other day, that underneath all forests, especially the rainforest, there's a mycelium network. There's a network of fungus, fungi. Some people say fungi. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Mushrooms, the network of linked, they're all connected. And they provide support to the trees and the plants, especially in the rainforest. But it's believed through all forests that this mycelium network provides nutrients to the soils for the plants, the trees, and holds water, nourishment for the plants to thrive. And what happens, many biologists believe that when there's clear cutting or destruction of trees, and this has happened all over this realm throughout history, that when the sun beats onto the earth and there's no shade, fungus need the shade and the moisture. It's like mosses thrive in most mosses. There's always exceptions to every rule. <laughs> Let's not get too caught up on concepts. So they believe that once these fungus once the fungi, fungi, perish, that the trees could never grow back, that they need this mycelium network to survive, to thrive, to flourish. You can do your own research on this, and they believe that's what happened in some of these deserts, especially in the tropics. You know, Sahara, much of it's in the tropical zone where there's still rainforests south of the Sahara, like in the Congo and whatnot. So obviously, with the help of man, we could regrow forests in a conscious way. But that's a massive area. But part of what we're seeing for the new earth is the power of our intent, the power of our will and our visions, our visualization and our, the energy of our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings and our love and our faith. All these things combine together. And this is a collective thing because we're collectively experiencing everything in this realm. We have our individual perception and awareness and experiences, but together we manifest the totality of this realm. So together, when we live from our heart and we hold our vision together, the code of the 144 and the 144,000, we see as part of the 100th monkey, where enough of us come together in the same moment, in the same time, and these are things we'll be doing with the Sacred 77 in the future. But now anyone can rise up, call on the Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit, to use your vessel for the highest good of all, and to heal Gaia, heal humanity, and to bring the rains to the West Coast. And you could say this, you know, Great Spirit, Holy Spirit, use this vessel for your great power, for your holy glory, to bring in the sacred waters, to calm the fires, to protect our animals, to protect our people, our tribes, our soul stars, our sisters and bro stars of the light, the animal kingdoms and the plant kingdoms. Because we see, many of us, the new earth, we can manifest any climate, we can manifest the lush rainforests all over this realm. 
There are no laws and limitations, the laws of physics in heaven on earth. There is the law of one, the one law of balance, harmony, abundance, and peace, unity, and love. But we see this field of energy, this field of resonance. We've come into harmonic resonance through this harmonic convergence of all timelines, all dimensions, all thoughts, all feeling come together in this still center of our pure awareness to activate our highest potential, our highest love, and our highest light. So we can do this now, brothers and sisters of the light. We can take this moment to rise up, spread our angelic wings, open our heart. With great faith, we know we have infinite potential. And with great courage, we see this as it is happening now. We breathe deep as we fill our body with oxygen. We hold it in and say, hold for a 72 count. And in the stillness, you feel in that 72 seconds, 72 stairways to heaven, steps to heaven, 73rd is the pearly gates as we step through. You can see them as stairs going down within yourself, within your vessel, in ground floor, the crystalline core of your sacred vessel, which is one with the crystalline core of Gaia and the crystalline core, the central suns of the galaxy and the central sun of the universe and the central sun of the multiverse is one and the same. There is no separation. So go into that feeling. And in that stillness, we let go and see the rain. We feel the rain. We feel the divine feminine waters of Maria, Mari, Mariam, Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Isis, Shakti, 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 the great condor of the south, the divine yin energies flowing in, really feel into it, and smile into that stillness, into that sacred space, and in that sacredness and divinity, we manifest from our heart and bring all into balance. The fire protects the water, and the water protects the fire, activating our divine union codes here now, forevermore, living in bliss, eternal bliss consciousness, heaven on earth, manifest now. The rainbow tribes unite and rise together in consciousness, in energy, in bliss, and in love through the sacred vortex into the holy of holies, heaven on earth. So we feel on the deepest level and we let go into that feeling and we rise up through that feeling as it lifts you above the sacred mountains, flying into the sun, soul star, being of light. I love you all. Namaste.